I am so excited to share with you guys my before and after of my basement. It is complete, or at least 99.9% .9 complete, and I cannot wait to show you everything I've got in this space. major piece that was missing for this basement makeover and I actually started looking for it probably two to three days after we got our keys so if you've been following for a while you know that was several months ago and I've been looking on Facebook marketplace Craigslist everywhere that I could think of because I was determined to buy it secondhand and after months and months of searching all of a sudden one time I typed it in boom there it was As soon as I saw that ad, I jumped on it. I was messaging with the owner and we set up a time to come and pick up the couches. And we rented a U-Haul, we drove an hour away, and I could not be more thrilled with how they turned out in this space. I think this is gonna be perfect. I know what's gonna happen. You're gonna be over there. I'm gonna be over here. <laughs> We're never gonna see each other again. Yeah, that's good. I'll be yelling at you. You'll be like, hey, pass the popcorn. What? One time there, one time there. <laughs> so important to me to buy secondhand for everything that I possibly could. I don't know if any of you guys actually have owned or grew up on a couch during the mid-century era, but they are not that comfortable and that has been my biggest problem finding a 1960s, 1970s couch that would work well with my style. So I was really trying to keep myself open to a newer made couch that had a very minimalist and modern style. So first of all, I know that this couch is abnormally large, but I have an abnormally large family. I'm one of six kids. Everyone's married or has a partner and most of them have several children. So when we do movie nights with my nieces, my nephews, even just my sisters and sister-in-laws, this is gonna get filled up really, really quickly. So it was really important to me with this home to create a space that my entire family could come and spend time and be really, really comfortable and casual and feel just like a safe space that we can all just relax and kick up our feet. And um, the couches aren't so fancy that I'm super scared about them getting damaged. I think it's a really, really good quality fabric. The family that we purchased these couches from had quite a few children and these couches are five years old and they have held up so well. This was such an incredible deal and to be able to find it secondhand, I'm just thrilled. The original owners had this custom made to be extra deep and you just can't find something like this for that price. They probably originally paid probably eight to $15,000 to have these custom made. So we got such an incredible deal and it was worth the wait. Not only is this couch beautiful and the perfect size, the perfect color I was looking for, but it's also really, really comfortable. 
since we are in the middle of remodeling and it feels like everything is just chaos upstairs, it was really important for us to take this basement and get it to a livable space where we could feel like this was now our home. And I think that we are so grateful we decided not to paint the wood paneling. If we had painted that, I feel like it really would have taken away from the 1960s, 1970s charm that this place already has. And to make it feel even more that era, we tried bringing in as many pieces from that era that we have thrifted over the years. And I don't think that there's anything more exciting than our tension pole George Nelson bookshelves. I cannot believe that we found a pair of them at an estate sale. I have really eclectic style. I like things from different decades. I like things from all different countries. And it's really fun to have this space where all those pieces come together. And I kind of feel like this is why I bought this and this is why I bought that. Because I knew that once I had the right space for everything, it was all just gonna come together beautifully. Both of these vases were from the estate sale where I got the bookshelves as well. And I love the fun shapes. Another thing I really like to do is to mix the high gloss with a rustic and matte finish. I feel like it really adds interest when you're looking at a bunch of pottery together. Having different shapes and textures really makes things pop. Got lots of my bowls over here. You can tell I have a mid-century bowl obsession. This one I found at Goodwill. I think it was $12.99. That one was just not even a year ago. I got this beautiful Japanese designer Ikebana vase from the estate sale that I got these bookshelves from. And I just love this piece so much. It's so special. I love that it has a little tail. I got this beautiful vase in Tacoma on Antique Row, which I might have just gone to again. So you'll have a fun thrifting video of that soon. This is also from the estate sale where I got the bookshelves. This was, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I don't have to guess. This was $2.99 from Salvation Army on July 18th. Fantastic. I don't even take tags off. <laughs> this is a dumb fake plant that I got at Goodwill, but I'm just trying to hide the heater vent right there. It's so ugly. We found a wood colored cover that should work behind there, and then maybe I won't feel like I have to hide it. That was a Salvation Army find. I got this at Relics Marketplace in Vancouver, Washington. I love this piece. I used it on my Halloween episode too. See, you can use it all times of year. And then this was a $10 vintage shop find. This was also from a vintage shop in Vancouver. And I love this piece. It's actually from the, what was it? Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's a copy of an original piece. So I actually just got the couches two days ago. So this space really came together over the last few days. And you can tell I'm probably still really giddy about it. But it's just so hard when you're living in a construction zone and it's such a relief to finally have a space that I can relax in and kick up my feet. And speaking of kicking up my feet, let me tell you about today's sponsor. You've gotten to know me pretty well over the last few years here on YouTube. So I don't think that this is gonna be a surprise to any of you that my favorite type of movies and TV shows to watch are period piece romances. I am a total hopeless romantic. I love to see how people lived and how they dressed and decorated their home back in the day. And that is why I love Acorn TV. Now that I have my basement put together, I have a super cozy couch. I'm really looking forward this fall to kicking back after we're done remodeling, relaxing on the couch, snuggling with my boys and putting on a good show. Acorn TV is loaded with thousands of hours of binge-worthy content and there's always something new to watch, which is so important because sometimes it feels like you've seen every show and you're looking for something new and exciting. Acorn TV has weekly releases and hundreds of exclusive shows from around the world that you're not gonna find anywhere else. And you're never gonna run out of content because Acorn TV adds new releases every Monday. Acorn TV is commercial free and available for just $5.99 a month. My current obsession is the Acorn TV original doll Gleesh. It is set in 1970s England. These three two-part films follow a detective as he solves unusual murders and reveals buried secrets amid some of England's most spectacular settings. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use the code LEFTCOAST. 
Heads up that the code is case sensitive, so when you type in left coast, make sure you use all lowercase letters. I really hope you guys give it a try. I think you are not gonna be disappointed. And a special shout out to all of my UK friends out there. You have the best shows. I'm serious. I love your shows. We are really excited to have this side table back in our life. My big giant Monstera monster has been on top of this, kind of tucked away in a corner for so long. So it's really fun to finally have this back out because the surface on it is just beautiful. This was a Goodwill find and I think we paid $7.99 for it and it didn't have these legs. It actually had a really rustic, naughty base. I'll pop in a picture so you can kind of see what it might have looked like before. The top we knew was beautiful, but all together it was too rustic for us. So I got four mid-century hairpin legs for only a dollar, for all four of them. They were attached to a rotten plywood top and I was at a thrift store and they were actually using it as their outdoor smoking table. And I asked if, they, if it was for sale and they said a dollar and they were very surprised that I wanted to take it. And I was very excited to take it. These typically retail for 20 to $30 per leg. My little cork cutie is a favorite. This is kind of a classic piece that we will keep forever. It was one of the very first mid-century things that we found. And all of this cork here was coated in dust. It had been in some kind of a factory or a warehouse or something where it had just been years and years and years of dust packed onto it. I took a toothbrush and I think I spent hours cleaning this up but I love it and we found the perfect shade for $2.99 at Goodwill maybe a month later. So I think that it looks really, really good together and especially with the burl wood table. So we found two of these coffee tables on OfferUp and we drove to Puyallup, Washington to get them. You wanna get them both? I'll, I'll, I do. I think we'll regret it if we don't get them both. <laughs> I don't know. The glass is heavy, man. I'll, I'll help you load it, no problem. This is why I always say you need to pack packing blankets because you never know when you're gonna pick up giant coffee tables and a piece of glass. No crazy driving, babe. Yeah, I'm gonna slam on the brakes. <laughs> Please don't. I call this one my hashtag coffee table because it kind of looks like a hashtag. And I think that these are really great. I like glass top tables. They might not be super functional if you have kids because you're gonna get fingerprints everywhere and they'll bang their little heads on them. But for us right now with no kids in the home, it's a really, really great coffee table. And I think the contrast between the wood and the light rug looks wonderful. When I walk into this room, it makes me so happy. And I really truly believe that that is the most important thing about your home. You want it to make you feel like you're in a safe space. You want it to represent you and your family and your life and your interests. And you just want it to be beautiful too. I had a Left Coast Revival's vintage mall space for four years, and this was something that was for sale in one of the other vendors' spaces. And I think we paid either 50 or $60 for it, but I love the spaghetti string ones that you see from time to time, but they just have that very plastic feel to them. I really liked this one because it was made with string, but it kind of had a little bit of that same effect. And then it's got a beautiful teak top there. It puts off this beautiful, soft, yellow, warm glow. And I like that you can see the shadows of the strings on the wall. Just so pretty, I love that one. And then we got my Don Friedman over here. This was an eBay score and I got this one for $40. That is such a good deal. And then the find of a decade for us, the George Nelson bookshelves. These are the tension pull style, which was something that was really on my list. It's just a classic mid-century design. And I think the fact that they've got the lights on here, all of these cabinets open up and there's very functional shelving units. Some even slide out. So functional for storing all my extra things I'm gonna use to decorate. And I just can't believe that they fit perfectly. The black on here, the metal, looks great with the TV. We might be painting these beams black, but we haven't decided yet. At first I thought for sure, because we love the contrast of the black with the wood, but now I'm just like, I'm just loving all the warm tones. So I kind of feel like we're definitely gonna leave them for now and we'll just see where it goes. 
My original plan was to take out this cabinet right here with the little shutters on it. It is hiding a exhaust pipe, which I thought maybe I could just paint black. It's currently a chrome color. And after we put the tension pull um, bookshelves up, I decided I might leave it there because it gives me a way to lean up the art in the back. So for now it's gonna stay. Obviously it looks out of place, but I'm not really striving for perfection down here. I'm really just striving for, I don't know what I'm striving for. I feel like I've already got what I was striving for. I just wanted something really comfortable and cozy. Picked up this old rusty metal Portland sign at a flea market maybe two years ago. And he's kind of just fun to lean up against something. I kind of move him around. He's ended up in almost every room of our last house. I got this candle holder in Nebraska on the junk jaunt. So that's a special one I'll keep forever. This was one of my very first mid-century finds from an estate sale. And it's a really heavy old brass one. And then we got my Lisa Larson. Everybody already knows this story. This is a Lisa Larson cat and it retails for around $400 to $550. And I found it at Goodwill for $4.99. And I've been looking for over five years for this exact piece. And then one day it was just magically there. I love picture books, especially ones on history, where I live, art, space, all that kind of fun stuff. And I get all of my picture books at the Goodwill outlet. Typically they have their books for only $2 a piece. So the majority of my books I have gotten from the Goodwill outlet. We're gonna get down on the ground now. Oh my gosh, so my floors have not been refinished. This is one of the worst areas in the whole room but eventually we will refinish all of these original parquet flooring. But for now, we just kind of covered them up with a rug. <laughs> this is a mid-century Ganey pot, and I picked this one up on my Central Oregon trip this summer. And I picked up this awesome finish piece on my Oregon coast trip. It's from 1955, and I just love this lion. He looks very Egyptian to me, um, but it's one of my favorite pieces. And this is also from the estate sale where I got the bookshelves. I got a lot of things there, as you can see. This piece I actually got on the half off day and they had $95 on it, which I just thought, I, even though I loved it, I just couldn't quite do the 95. But when it was there for the half off day, I picked it up for half price. Back in 2013, I fell in love with this beautiful apartment that I stayed in in Barcelona. And one of the things that I took away from that that always stuck with me was art does not have to be put on the wall. I love the idea of art just leaning up against the floor. You do have to have kind of larger pieces, but I think it's just an interesting thing and I had never seen it before I went to that Barcelona apartment. So that was my inspiration for having the art on the floor. Over here is not quite finished. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. And I think I just need a little bit more time to decide what to do. I actually have the other one of these. I found these at Persnickety in downtown Vancouver. It is an amazing vintage store and they had the pair for, I think it was $300. And these retail for around 1,500 to 2,000 for the pair. They are so hard to find. And I think what I'm gonna do is have them hanging. Well, I can't quite, let me see if I can wide angle this for you. Hold on one sec. Boom, there we go. I think I wanna have them hanging like side by side touching. That's the way I've seen it in several mid-century homes before. And I think it looks best like that. I had been kind of contemplating putting it down here and kind of staggering them. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, if I should hang them side by side or if I should stagger them. This globe was passed down in the family and traveling is one of my biggest passions in life. So this is gonna be my little world traveling area over here. This Luna chair was a Goodwill outlet find for only $10. Still haven't found the ottoman. I've been looking for a couple years, but I can't complain about $10 for that chair. And then these were also Goodwill outlet finds. They're a little trio of stacking tables and they're not in perfect condition, but they are super functional and they work great to hold my beautiful lamp that I got. 
and I can't take you to the bomb shelter bar down there because I'm not allowed to go down there. So we will have to wait until that is all complete and we'll be surprised together. Oh, I almost forgot my Zoinker. This was from Goodwill and it's actually one of my very favorite paintings that I own because it's very mid-century, but it also has that Italian vibe and I absolutely love the colors in it. So this was what we call a Zoinker. My husband, Jesse, saw this on the shelf at Goodwill and when he reached and grabbed it, he yelled, Zoink! And so from now on, if you see something really good at Goodwill, we always yell, Zoink! and people think we're really weird, which we are. So I've been asked a few times recently, how many Starburst clocks do I have? And the answer is I have five. So I have two of the black and brass ones. This one was the one from my Nebraska junk jaunt. I have another one I found in Vernonia, Oregon last year. We have a beautiful wooden one that you're gonna see in my office makeover, which was a housewarming gift from our realtors. And then I have some more that I have found at thrift stores that don't work, they just need a little bit of love. So that's why you'll see a starburst clock in pretty much every single room of our house because I have a bunch of them. We had this rug because when we sold our last house, we had only a couple days to get it ready to stage because we bought this house and we were kind of scrambling. So I didn't have much time and I didn't wanna have my antique rugs at the house when people were going through touring. So I ended up getting these off of Amazon and they are natural fiber jute rugs. I'll put the link in the description because they were really affordable and I felt like the quality once we got it was really good. I think this one was maybe $150, but for a rug this size brand new, that's made out of natural fibers, that's a really good price. So I'll link that in the description. This is just short term for us. I think our long-term goal is to get something more, you know, 70s shag in the same color palette. But for now, this works great. I have an idea and I would love to know what you guys think of this, but there's gonna be a lot of people on the couch when I have my family over and we have our movie nights or Survivor TV show nights on Wednesdays. And I think it's annoying when you have to lean over and set your glass on the coffee table, especially when the seats are this wide. So my thought was, what if we pulled it out away from the wall, maybe like six inches or eight inches, and we actually had a board that ran all the way across and all the way across here. And then we can finish it off nicely with the board going all the way down to the floor. We could stain it maybe to match the coffee table color. And that gives you, you know, like a little sofa table back there. So you basically have somewhere where I can put a couple little plants, because you know, more is more, especially with plants. A couple candles, and we can set our drinks anywhere pretty much behind the whole thing. And that way it also moves the couch just a little bit closer to the TV, which I feel like would be good. So I think that might be my next DIY project. So let me know what you guys think. Have you guys ever done that before? I know in my Vancouver house, we had a windowsill right behind where we sat and I loved it. I could set my little coffee mug or tea mug or wine glass or whatever I had right behind me. So I think that might be, I think it might be a good idea. I'm just, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we have a finished space in this house. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys had fun getting to see what I've done with this space so far. And I think it's really fun for me and I hope it's fun for you to get to see these pieces that you are out seeing me treasure hunting and finding over the years and finally seeing them come together into their final resting place or at least until I decide to move it to another space. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for all of the support and for watching my videos. It means that I get to keep making more. As long as you keep watching, I'm gonna keep making videos. And I just wanna say thank you because your support means so much. And there are so many exciting projects I have in the works right now. And I can't even wait to share some big trips that I have planned for 2022. So I am planning on taking you guys on so many fun adventures all over the country, all over the world, and of course in my own home too, as I still have a lot of work to do. So I will see you guys in the next adventure.